Good afternoon. I just want to talk to you today about speed and impact. This is part of our six week series about pivoting your instruction and how you can incorporate strategies into your shortened courses or even into your 16 week courses. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is speed and impact. Would you rather work more hours per day and fewer days or would you work fewer hours per day, but more days. So you're still putting in the same amount of work, but is it condensed or is it over a longer period of time? Most of our students want to do more work in a shorter amount of time so that they can graduate faster, so that they can end up with less debt because the more time you spend in school, the more you have to spend on housing and food and those kinds of things. So speed and impact is what we're going to be focusing on in this particular slideshow because we're going to be talking about condensed courses. So how can students benefit from approaches to higher education that differ from different traditional college um, experiences? Well, accelerated um, programs offer a quicker way to get through classes so that you can finish faster, so that you can get back into the work environment faster. But accelerated coursework should be of the same quality. It's not that you're trying to stuff it all into eight weeks and that all that should be focused on is the content. You should also continue to focus on the student and their learning. The increased workload of an accelerated course might mean that your students are only taking one to two courses. Would focus more on your content and on what you're trying to teach them. Now, some of the advantages of accelerated learning, longer class sessions are going to foster a deeper learning and increase students' intellectual investment because we know that if you miss one class period, it's like missing an entire week of class. So they're more likely to show up and it improves their interactions because they know if they miss one thing, then they're going to be struggling to catch up for the rest of the semester. Students tend to be better prepared for class when they're in these accelerated courses and they meet the needs of learners who have external commitments. So if you have a student who can't come three days a week because they have a job or they have children, this allows them to make that commitment to come once a week to be able to get the same amount and rigor of learning. So why accelerate? Well, these allow students to focus on fewer courses, which means that they can get a deeper understanding of your particular course. It's also found to improve students' academic performance and also can lead to higher graduation rates, which is what we all want. So let's talk about speed. When we start the speed discussion, we have to talk about what a credit hour really means. And it means that there's one hour of classroom or direct faculty instruction and a minimum of two hours of out-of-class student work for approximately 15 weeks. So that term hour usually refers to 50 minutes of instruction or 150 minutes per week of lecture classes. So most traditional on-campus programs allocate those 150 minutes of instruction per week, or there's 200 uh, or 2,250 minutes in total, or 37 and a half clock hours for each three credit hour course. Now we're going to use the idea that you are doing a 16 week semester, but generally you don't teach in the 16th week because that's the finals week. And so we're gonna focus on our time as if you're only teaching for 15 weeks. So, if credit hour definitions that are based on the expectation that the student is spending two hours outside of your class, that's going to be 112 and a half hours per semester or seven and a half hours a week for each three credit hour course. Now, you have 122 and a half total hours per three credit hour course to get as much knowledge into your students and help them to be able to critically think through that knowledge. Now that's seven and a half hours a week for 15 weeks or 15 hours a week for an eight week course, which is generally what we provide here. So what does all of this time mean to you? 
Well, it means that you're going to have to change a few of the ways that you do things in order to accommodate these students who are going to be in this accelerated classroom. And one of the most important things is student communication. You have to prioritize your contact. Now, the time that you spend with your student, whether face-to-face -face or online, is the most valuable aspect of your course. It's an opportunity to share your expertise and your experience and be able to provide your students with deep learning activities that help them master that content. It helps you to build stronger relationships with your students when you're getting to see them for a long period of time. It allows you to see some of their their different mannerisms and things that really resonate with them. And it also helps them build relationships with their peers, which can have a significant impact on their learning. We want to encourage a growth mindset in these students. So we want to encourage them to not think about the grade, but think about the growth. When students are focused on if they're making an A or not, that does not lead to them focusing and being able to retain that information in the long term. Whereas if they're working for growth, getting better than they were the time before, that can lead to a deeper understanding of the content and also a longer retention. There's been lots of psychological studies done that show that you shouldn't tell your kid that they're smart. You should tell that your kid that they're a good hard worker. When you tell your kid that they're smart and they fail at something, then they think that there's something wrong with them. But if you tell them that they're a hard worker and they fail at something, they know that all they have to do is try again. And so that failure is not as devastating to them. When we are communicating with our students and we're promoting this growth mindset, we really need to establish clear expectations in our classroom. Because it's an accelerated course, if they miss one class period, that's a whole week's worth of of instruction. And so that can be devastating uh, to their ability to continue in the class. So create a sense of importance by establishing your attendance and participation goals. Um, communicate this to the students and help them to understand that it's not like when you miss in a 16 week course where you can just catch up in the, in the interim. This is a whole week's worth of intellectual information. And make sure that you are responding to your students promptly and that you're answering any questions very quickly because again, they need that feedback as soon as you can give it to them because we do have such a compressed timeline. You wanna use this time also to find meaning and relevance in your classroom. So students who are taking an accelerated course your students aren't going to be able to listen to you lecture for 150 minutes straight. We found that the average attention span of an adult learner is about 15 minutes in a lecture scenario. However, if you inject meaningful and relevant activities into your classroom, this will help them gain a deeper understanding of the content and also be able to apply that learning to real world situations. Help them to internalize those key concepts and consider flipped instruction where you record your le lectures beforehand and then the students watch them and then you can engage in discussions and engaging activities that help them to utilize that information that they looked at in that lecture or that reading. Active learning is the best approach in these rigorous eight week courses because it allows the student to approach the instruction um, and approach the material in a much more engaging way, in a way that they can understand it and it's not just reading or video. It allows them to interact with the course material through discussions and problem solving, case studies, role plays, and lots of other different methods. So what's the impact that this active learning and this accelerated course has on your students? Let's first look at the word impactful. So to be impactful is life-changing. So how is your course going to change your students' lives? Does it impart essential skills outside of just rote knowledge? 
Is it important for subsequent success in different courses? Is it something that they're going to need once they get out into the real world and they have a job that's related to this particular class that you teach? Is it inspiring them to become engaged citizens who work to make a better community? Is it preparing them for a graduate program? What is it? What is the impact you want this course to have? If your students don't understand the impact, they are less likely to engage. So making sure that you link that learning to an outside reasoning other than you just need this to get the grade will greatly increase the retention that your students have and the engagement that you see in your courses. So how can we foster impact? Well, we need to start every class session with some connection to the material outside of you have to learn this for a grade. What are they going to learn? Why is it important? And then connect that instruction to their current studies, their future studies, their future jobs, um, or their quality of life after graduation. And then structure your assignments to make sure that they're directly applicable to those whys that you gave them earlier. And then incorporate social interaction. We find that students learn much better when they have peer-to-peer -peer interaction. So incorporate quick partner discussions, come up with small group activities, not like a big project, but something that they can do together, something that will help to foster that peer-to-peer -peer connection. And then give them some sort of problem that they have to work together to solve that will also better their community. Now, not every class can incorporate those kinds of strategies, um, but most can, especially the partner discussions and the small group activities. So if you have a class that you can't change the course curriculum, make sure that you're still being inclusive and also accessible and diverse to your students. So that's what we call minding the gap. So when you notice that there's a discrepancy between what your students know and what they're expected to be able to do, create a resource for them. So just because you have this master shell that was created for you doesn't mean that you can't add additional resources to help those students who need a little bit more help. Reinforce key concepts during discussions and um, create instructional videos for things that you think that they might need more help with to supplement your existing course materials. So how do we assess the impact of what we're doing in these, in these accelerated courses? Um, multiple choice exams generally just measure rote knowledge. You can write them in such a way that they can um, go with the higher levels of blooms, but in general, they're just rote. Um, also subject to cheating, which I know is a concern of many professors. So how do we get past that? Well, you can do performance tasks that measure their acquisition of proficiency and skills or competencies. Um, you can also do open-ended assessments, and you can also use Bloom's Taxonomy to help you build those questions. When I was teaching biology, I had about 10 multiple choice and then the rest of the questions were short answer and they were not necessarily something that they could look up in the book as much as they were how you could apply particular uh, information to situations so for example there are six characteristics of life and if i wanted you to list off the six characteristics of life that would be very much rote knowledge but how I made them analyze and incorporate that knowledge was to ask them if they found a new organism, what would they look for and what kind of scientific experiment would they design to test for the six characteristics of life and how would they go about identifying where that particular organism would fall inside of the classification system. And if they could show me all of those, how would they name it? So it became a fun exercise for them also because they knew that if they could come up with these excellent um, designs of experiments to test for the six characteristics of life 
and they could put them in the taxonomic order, then they would be able to name it and they could give it any kind of fun or silly name that they wanted to. So this is an example of Bloom's taxonomy. Um, you can see that at the very top is creating or producing new or original um, work. And we wanna make sure that we stay probably in the green, yellow, red band when we're assessing, because this allows us to know that the student actually can utilize that information as opposed to just regurgitate it on a test. Blooms was developed to provide a common language for all instructors to be able to discuss and exchange learning um, and assessment methods. And so using this can really help uh, students with consistency across courses as well. So when you're teaching an accelerated course, one of the most important factors is time. Like we said in the beginning, you have to think about your credit hour definition and how much you have to get into this eight weeks. So time management is crucial, both for you and your students. We need to make sure that our students attend class because again, if you miss one class period, you miss an entire week. And we need to help our students with understanding the expectations. So one of the best ways for you as an instructor to know whether or not the amount of work that you're giving them in this eight week span of time is appropriate for the length of time and the um, intensity of the course is to use the workload estimator. So you can go in and put how many writing assignments you're gonna have, how many pages of reading you're gonna have a week. And it will tell you how long the students will need to spend outside of class to be able to achieve what you want them to achieve. So this can help you understand if you're giving them more than what the credit hour um, would allow for or less than. It can help you um, make sure that you're not placing an undue hardship on your students. Um, and it can help you to eliminate unnecessary assignments. It can help you reduce the, the number of pages that students have to read. Um, and it helps you create resources that can help students um, who might lack the background knowledge for your particular course. Now, if you can't make changes to your course, then this, this doesn't apply to you. We also need to make sure that we provide more student support in these kinds of courses because we don't have as long for them to regain their footing if they start to slip. So discuss strategies for time management. You can provide them a daily reading schedule so that they can stay on task. Um, you can divide your assignments into subsections so that um, they know what benchmarks they need to meet before they have that big project due at the very end. You need to monitor your student participation closely, so make sure that you're looking to make sure that your students are turning in their work, that they're participating in the discussion boards, and reach out to those students who aren't doing that. And um, Bruce, when he was creating his design thinking course, he would send out a daily email that told them what they should have done yesterday, what they did today, and what they needed to do tomorrow. And so that helped his students stay on track. I sent my students a weekly email, whatever works for you to help keep your students on track. So today's lesson has focused on the considerations of speed and impact on your courses. If you need any more information about this, you can go to the TLPEC's website where we have faculty resources that can give you more information or you can schedule a call with us or come in and see us or we'll come see you. Whatever you need to be able to fully develop your courses into something that will help us to retain students and also to give them the best education possible. Thanks for tuning in today.